Now that we have our regional homogeneity map, we need to now normalize it so that we can do a higher level t-test on it. In other words, we're trying to make all these values more normally distributed. If you've ever done something like Fisher's R to Z transform, it's the same thing. Correlation coefficients aren't necessarily normally distributed, but we can apply some transformation to make them normally distributed. So before we do that, let's just make a couple distinctions here. Uh, normalization has a couple different meanings in fMRI land. The first meaning is we normalize a data set to a standardized space so that everybody's now in the same space and we can do comparisons across them. What we're doing here is normalization for statistics or coefficients. It's a similar idea, but we're just applying them to numbers. So again, we're just normally distributing them or making them more closely approximate a normal distribution so that they can be compared against each other across subjects in a t-test. Yes. Also, one other little dichotomy we should be familiar with is there's 3D tools and there are 1D tools. So you'll notice in a lot of APNI commands, the very first things you type in is 3D something, like 3D Volreg, uh, 3D T-Fitter, 3D Deconvolve. Those deal with 3D data sets, often 3D plus a time dimension. So three dimensions just refers to this huge matrix, three-dimensional matrix, of voxels, right? Each voxel has three dimensions and they're all usually all stacked together like a giant Rubik's cube. And they also have a time component which is usually however many scans we acquired during that run. Now a lot of tools like 3D Mean, 3D TSTAT, those deal with time courses. So 3D plus time data sets which have an entire time course you can use to take the mean of and the standard deviation of. But right now we have a data set, a regional homogeneity data set, with one value per voxel. Each voxel has the Kendall's correlation coefficient, which is a quantitative measurement of how well that voxel's time course matches up with its neighbors. So now we don't really have a time component anymore, we just have one value per voxel, and we'll need to use a 1D tool to analyze it. 1D meaning that it simply takes for input, say, one column of numbers. So each row is a different number, and a 1D tool can process that. So to do that, what we're going to do first is use a 3D tool, 3D mass dump, to extract each value from each voxel, right? So I've included the uh, options, no IJK, don't want that information, uh, using the group mask, the whole brain mask, and then taking for input the Reho test mask that we calculated earlier. Now you could use a more specific mask, like a gray matter mask. If, for example, you're only interested in voxels within the gray matter. That's a perfectly valid approach. For right now, I'm just going to focus on the whole brain. We'll then pipe it using this, this bar right here. We're going to pipe that output into 1dtool.py. And this command, this option, show MMMS, that's going to calculate things like mean and standard deviation. And then for the in file, this dash right here just means for the input, simply use the output of this previous command right here. So we hit enter and we get a bunch of different values. We're going to focus on the mean and also the standard deviation. So notice the mean is 0.57 roughly, standard deviation is 0.14 across all of the voxels for this whole brain mask. Now to create my normalized data set I can use 3 dcalc So 3 reho test mask plus TLRC and for B is going to be this group mask because I want to multiply this by the uh, group mask to exclude any stuff outside the whole brain. And the expression is going to be something like, um, so the Reho test mask minus the mean. All right, so we're going to subtract the mean off from all that. Divided by the standard deviation, which is 0.1383, multiplied by B, which is simply a matrix of zeros and ones, so ones where the whole brain is and zeros outside of that, the stuff that we're not interested in. And this prefix will be uh, reho normalized. So for the underlay, I'm just going to have MP rage, the anatomical image, and then reho normalized. Yes. Okay. So put that overlay reho right there, uh, make it look kind of nice everybody. 
And so yeah, so there we have it. Now we have some values which are negative. Um, let's look at the values right here. Some values are negative, some values are positive. Now notice that one of the arguments for why a gray matter mask might be a more valid approach is that most of your positive values are within the gray matter and most of the negative values are within the white matter and CSF. But for right now we're just going to focus on using the entire brain for normalization. In the later tutorial, the next tutorial, we'll be talking about how to do that across all subjects to do reho at the group level.